my guys uh, it is a chilly summer night here in paradise and uh, bugs in a jar farm good lord where we have made it to the end of another weekend it is now sunday night when is that june 4th 2023 and uh I'm glad to say, as far as they can see into the future here, uh, we do not see a temperature higher than 75 degrees between now and the middle of June. Of course, we don't see any rain either in the forecast. <coughs> but anyway, as some of you know, I have been trying to finish up Bugs in a Jar Tiny House Community, and it's, I think it will be tied up this week finally. And, uh, so maybe I can get back to the Doomosphere a little bit. I, you know, this thing called having a life uh, kind of gets in the way of being a Doomer. This is why uh, there aren't many Doomers on the planet because you know, stuff happens. But anyway, we always have time for doom here on Collapse Chronicles. And I want to send out a big thank you to this alert listener. I do not know this man, Stephen Thomas. Stephen Thomas has uh, reminded me of Julian Cribbs blog that I have to admit I have just let with all the doom scrolling uh, <clears throat> I forgot about one of the great doomers on the planet uh, I have actually had the pleasure of interviewing Julian Cribb at C-R-I-B-B -B. not once but two times so if you go and find my interviews I think you I think I have both of them posted up there. So for those of you who have not heard those interviews and are not aware of who Julian is, <clears throat> uh, Julian Cribb, according to himself, is an Australian author and science communicator. He is fellow of the Royal Society of the Arts the Australian Academy of Technological Science and the Australian National University Emeritus Facility. He is a member of the Order of Australia, whatever that means. And he is, uh, he's mainly a journalist. He's mainly uh, an environmental journalist with over 9,000 articles 3,000 science media releases and eight books. Uh, anyway, some of his books, The Coming Famine, Poisoned Planet, Surviving the 21st Century, which is what we were talking about mostly in our interview. <clears throat> Surviving the 21st Century... Uh, anyway, uh, the man uh, is not a clueless moron. He is a doomer extraordinaire, and he has a this great blog called Surviving C21. Um, this blog is about our existential emergency the combination of catastrophic threats which we humans are creating that imperil our own future and that of all of our descendants. It's not a palatable subject, but it is quite simply the most important issue facing humanity today. There is nothing that tops it, yet it gains minimal attention. And, uh, unfortunately, judging by the number of comments on most of uh, Julian's excellent articles, I'm afraid his blog is gaining minimal attention. So we're going to try to bring some more traffic to Surviving 
C21, and good lord, uh, <laughs> we're just going to run down some of my choices, and every one of these, any one of these could be a chronicle of the collapse. This man is out there chronicling the collapse. <clears throat> the Earth has bipolar disorder, and so do we. Well, I know I do. The nation state is on the skids. A plan for human survival. The world votes for climate hell. Here comes the catastrophocene. <clears throat> Humanity sailing into a stagnant ocean, the age of deceit, the end of politics, the rise and rise of petrofascism. The earth strikes back. Idiocracy is the decline in human intelligence undermining democracy. Time to end the mass killing choosing between national happiness and global misery, why we must clean up the earth, our existential crisis, what is to be done, why 2050 is too darned late. Yes, diagnosing the American disease is a food crisis the next big hit for humanity. Yes. Time to speak the unspeakable, the methane gun, the dark age of science denial, can human civilization survive? The answer to that is no, it cannot. Age of the nuclear moron, when optimism spells disaster. Yes, eight nations now have the power to terminate civilization. Yep. The world is facing a water crisis. Earth is now a toxic planet. Yep. Why Homo sapiens need a new name. Earth at risk of ecological breakdown, and of course asking the question, can humanity survive the 21st century? Now I skipped over some of the hopium and uh, that sounded like the man uh, <clears throat> does not have any hopium or apocalyptism. But uh, through it all, to this day, uh, Julian Cribb, I think he's about my age, he still is acting like, at least publicly, we can turn this train around. But with all the choices, you will not be surprised which one I chose to feature to give you a taste of Julian Cribb's writing. <clears throat> Has the population bomb exploded? Has it exploded? And this actually came out in November and it just went under my radar, but this is one of the great rants on overpopulation I have heard in a while. So, uh, if anybody here does not realize that Collapse Chronicles is an overpopulation chronicle, uh, I don't even need to read an opening quote today because Julian Cribb says it all right here. Take it away, Julian. Has the population bomb exploded? On November 15th, 2022, according to the UN, Human being number 8 billion entered the world, but what sort of a world are they inheriting? The scientific evidence is already amassing that the Earth has far more humans living at far higher levels of consumption and pollution than it can possibly carry in the long run. The proof of this is all around us in our faces, 
and on the news every single day. Wild floods, heat waves, fierce droughts, raging wildfires, dust storms sweeping topsoil off our farms, dying rivers and lakes, melting glaciers, staggering losses of birds, mammals, fish, insects, and other life, shrinking forests and spreading deserts, polluted water, oceans, food, and air, declining oxygen levels, hunger, and starvation, the spread of formerly unknown diseases, the mass migration of 350 million people a year, the uncontrolled rise of dangerous new technologies, and the insidious worldwide spread of misinformation and delusion about it all. Overpopulation is not a matter for individual or group opinion or for ideology. Overpopulation is defined as the point when a creature begins to exceed and then to destroy the resources that support and give it life. It can be measured with precision in countless ways the evidence is accumulating that humans have overpopulated planet Earth by exceeding the boundaries that ensure the renewal of life. Early warnings of this danger were uttered by Professor Paul Ehrlich in the Population Bomb in 1962 and the Club of Rome in Limits to Growth in 1972. Then in the 1990s, Mathis Wackernagel developed the Global Footprint Network, whose work now shows we exceed Earth's renewable carrying capacity by July each year, making the world economy nothing more than a giant Ponzi scheme. More recently, Johan Rockström and colleagues devised the Global Boundaries concept, which shows humanity has now exceeded its safe limits in four out of nine fields. I could swear that Manga Bay is claiming six of the nine planetary boundaries have been exceeded. And these are not to be confused with the safety zones <clears throat> that I was talking about a couple of days ago, which I think seven of the eight safety zones have been exceeded somewhere between four and six of the planetary boundaries have been exceeded because there are too many people on the planet. <clears throat> Yet the sober, well-argued, firmly evidenced warnings have all been dismissed or belittled by various vested interests, political, religious, and commercial who care not about the survival of humanity, but only what they can gain from it in the short run. Overpopulation is the word no politician, priest, economist, or business executive dares to utter. It is the unmentionable but inescapable elephant in the room of the human future. The advent of the eight billionth little human gives us sober reason to reflect on the dangers of overpopulation. In the space of a single lifetime, our numbers have swollen from two billion to eight billion and continue to burgeon at a rate of about 80 million, 1% per year. Anyone who considers the matter soon realizes that the resources needed to support such gigantic numbers 
will run out and there will be an exceedingly painful crash. <clears throat> that, of course, is why nobody likes to talk about it. Instead, even many who recognize there is a dreadful problem building up in everybody's future try to divert attention from population growth and towards other issues such as overconsumption, equity, or don't forget the right to have children. Yep. <clears throat> While our numbers were quadrupling, it is true our consumption has also run off the rails and is generating the resource and environmental crises <clears throat> that now loom. Since 1972, human consumption of material resources has tripled from 29 billion tons per year to 101 billion tons in 2021 and is on track to reach 170 billion tons by 2050 as documented in the Circularity Gap Report. And he has a bunch of links all through this article into other doom and gloom. So, uh, 1972, according to this report, humans consuming 29 billion tons of the planet per year, 170 billion, that's almost a six-fold increase by 2050. And, of course, there's a lot of people, uh, more and more people I've been talking about, saying the actual numbers are much greater than that. <clears throat> The one thing that has run off the rails is pollution. All told, humans release over 200 billion tons of waste into the biosphere every year, including 2.5 billion tons of chemicals, mostly toxic. This is having a dire impact on the ability of all forms of life, ourselves included, to survive in the long run. The universal vanishing of insects. Well, I know one insect I wish I could get to vanish. Anyway, the universal vanishing of insects, bees, frogs, and birds is almost certainly related to this uncontrolled toxic avalanche. So yes, the bomb has already exploded, meaning the population bomb has already exploded, though the full impact of that blast is yet to be felt. This raises the essential, though unpalatable, question of whether we must now take deliberate, voluntary steps to reduce the human population, along with its consumption pollution, back to a size the Earth can sustain. <clears throat> the central issue of human population growth is not whether it is good or bad. It is can we avoid a devastating crash caused by our outrunning the planet's ability to support us? Voluntary population reduction is therefore about sparing billions of people needless and agonizing deaths by starvation, war, and disease which will otherwise result from a collapse in our resources. To prevent the crash, we have to prevent and reverse the growth. There is no real alternative. Those who advocate a larger population
population, you know, the Elon Musk crowd, those who advocate a larger population for either the planet or country are calling for disaster, whether they admit it or not, in the same breath, they are advocating, you know, by, you know, Elon Musk or anyone else saying we need more people to keep civilization from uh, crashing. By saying that in the same breath, this is what they are advocating. Rising scarcity of resources such as water, soil, timber, fish, and certain minerals leading to a greater risk of war. Accelerated climate change worse pollution, environmental degradation, and extinction of species, higher food prices for all, greater risk of famines, more child deaths, and greater human suffering, increased risk of pandemic diseases, poorer levels of population health, an increase in mass population movements potentially reaching 1 billion per year, increased risk of megacity collapse and government failure, increased risk of worldwide economic and civilizational collapse, housing, food, and other basic goods that are unaffordable to the young or the poor. And there you go. So that is what Elon Musk and his gang of clueless morons are advocating by advocating we need more people on the planet. Oh, yeah. Every person who insists on their right to have more children diminishes the right of all children, including their own children, to live on a safe habitable planet. Fortunately, a growing number of thinking people are embracing the idea of one child fewer per family, and many are even taking the decision to remain childless because, here is my child right here, to remain childless because they foresee what a fearsome world a child born today will face. If universal family planning is made available and one child fewer becomes an accepted global norm, then UN projects and projections suggest it is possible to reduce the human population to six and a half billion by 2100 and lower still beyond that. However, the scientific evidence suggests that this, meaning six and a half billion people, is still three times more than the Earth's carrying capacity, which is estimated at two to two and a half billion people living at advanced living standards. For human civilization to survive in the longer run, the global conversation now needs to turn on the best way to reduce our numbers in the least painful way and without coercion. Because let there be no doubt if we do not do it ourselves, then nature will do it for us. And I have been hearing that line since I think there were maybe three billion people on the planet. Uh, so anyway, you know, what he was talking about uh, there towards the end, you know, which I wish he had expounded a little bit more that even if, uh, you know, we reduce the population down to six and a half billion, that's still, uh, you know, three times as many 
uh, people as this earth can support anywhere near sustainably. And that's what, you know, all of this crap that you're reading in the mainstream media, you know, which has become a major cheerleading lapdog of, uh, you, you know, the New World Order po overpopulation agenda, you know, to increase birth rates, to increase the number. And they always talk about this replacement level. You know, well, they're talking about if you're in 2023 and you're, and you're screaming you don't want it to go down below the replacement level, you're acting like that 8 billion people is the bare minimum people. We need to go down below the replacement level by, uh, you know, at least 75% uh, all of this absurd horse shit. Um, every time I open up the mainstream media, I was reading it in that right-wing rag, the Telegraph today. We need more babies to save civilization. Oh, boy. Anyway, good for you, Brother Julian Cribb, and uh, he claims he's still... Uh, he claims he's still an apocaloptimist. I have a hard time believing that, Julian, but if it helps you sleep better at night. Anyway, speaking of sleeping better tonight, uh, I'm going to climb down in this sleeping bag on this cold summer night and uh, see what Monday morning brings. I highly suggest you get out there and sleep better at night while you still can. Bye, guys.